everyone, welcome to another episode of Speculative Speculations. I'm Varsha. I'm Steve. <laughs> I'm Jared. And I'm Chris. And this is a sci-fi podcast where we talk about sci-fi stories in all their forms. That little gap of silence there was done. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But today we're going to be talking about chapter 5 of Annihilation. Uh, this is the day we finished the book. And uh, and and what is it? Uh, Liking What You See by Ted Chang, which is in the short story collection, The Stories of Your Life and Others. Um, so we'll go straight into talking about Annihilation. So what did you all think? Did it uh, satisfy your curiosity or did you just did it just make you more eager to read the second book? Both. <laughs> it's both. It's both an acceptable answer. I was very satisfied by how it ended up, uh, mm. and what it did, and also left basically all of the mystery for you yeah. still there. <laughs> mm. It did not satisfy my curiosity. Oh. Oh. Uh, but it definitely wanted me to read more. So mm. I think my curiosity needs more to get satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we got some answers, sort of. Maybe they created more questions too. We read the husband's journal, which Jared was super eager to get to last time. I, I was kind of hoping we'd get snippets, not just a summary from her, but that that makes sense. Uh, yep. I, I guess it's it's in line with how we read the remaining journals. So I suppose that that works. We did get a look at the crawler. And, well, and kind yeah. of, <laughs> sort of, yeah. Left a lot to the imagination. It's, it was, it kind of, uh, but I guess it, it's meant to. It kind of get the impression it's meant to kind of make you feel disoriented and confused and mm. not quite because I don't think she understood what she saw. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And a return of the lighthouse keeper <laughs> in some form. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Many curiosities, for sure. So, uh, where did we leave off at the end of chapter four? She uh, started reading the husband's journal, right? Or she did something else happen before she got to the journal? Yeah. Uh, was quite yet. Yeah, I feel like something. She did some stuff in the. In the encampment, maybe? Like she mm. checked what stuff was available, that stuff was destroyed a lot of it. Um, yeah. There's a lot of discussion about, about where she was, if you know what I mean, and, and how you, kind of at home she felt and, and that kind of stuff. Like I was kind of surprised that they even got, didn't go near at any stage in that last chapter about her ever leaving. Um, mm. the, the area X, you know, wasn't to return back to report what she found. And actually, everything that she did in this last chapter just kind of further ingrained herself into into the place she was in, you know, in some ways. So it made her more committed to being there, whether it's her own state or, you know, or reading up the journal or whatever else it was, you know. Yeah. Do you think her uh, conclusion that she's never leaving is ominous, like that she feels like she's trapped here or that um, I'm not returning home? Is that out of uh, resignation, do you think? Or do you think she's happy about it? I kind of felt like it was sort of like how earlier in the book she was saying she never wanted to leave that tide pool. Mm. I think it was kind of like that. It felt to me yeah. like this is kind of where she belongs almost. Like this is her, this is her new big tide pool that she's going to stare at for the rest of her life <laughs> that's a feeling i got yeah yeah that, that makes sense because before I mean, she could only like observe like she wanted to be part of it observe it, and sort of be part of the ecosystem not disturb it but i think finally she can actually like really be part of it and be one with it like that's how i intended it yeah and also maybe mm. be closer to her husband i guess in some way i mean for for me dan that was very much the surprising thing about the last chapter is that it almost became 
a romantic love story at parts like was she got a connection to your husband in a way through reading his journal that she never had in real life and it, and it actually was quite sweet you know it, it actually was quite touching for somebody that's quite distant and separated the whole way through the book that they they kind of see themselves in some of them some of her husband's words and actually his experience is kind of mirroring her own in some way sort of brings them closer together even though they've never been further apart in some sense so mm -hmm. yeah. i thought that was that was that was really i mean i think that was just really beautifully done i really connected with that yeah, yeah. i i i agree it was really beautiful the whole like almost a pivot in their relationship so far right like this there's a slightly less cold aspect of her but then it's i feel like we almost had our had the carpet pulled out from under our legs there when uh, she tells us that bit about how her husband asked, will you come after me if I don't come back? And she doesn't give him an answer. And then later she tells us, I almost wish that I had come here for him. So she didn't come after him. Uh, and she came for her own reasons. And even with reading the journal and stuff, like, yeah, she's like, yeah, cool, maybe I'll find him. I think he's part of the the background now and I can be part of the background and feel closer to him. But it, it doesn't feel like that's, that's going to be her primary objective still. Like it, he's still not anywhere at the top of her priority list, which it's is a long journey, right? Mm -hmm. But it's, it's also a way of being closer to him finally. Like maybe this is like the actual way they can finally understand each other, right? Because she mm -hmm. does say when she's reading the Book. It's like, oh, I didn't really understand some things about him. I didn't really know he thought like these things or something. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was really poignant how he re referred to her in the journal through like calling her ghost bird, maybe asking some questions, leaving some things for her to figure out. And she says that uh, she didn't she knew that it was for him and done with love because he was careful to not use too many endearments because he knows that she hated those. So like that little care that he took <laughs> to write in the journal for her, but also like being careful about the boundaries. I, I thought that was very cute. Yeah, and she, and she, she mentioned, I think, uh, that, that uh, she was touched that he wrote this basically to her uh, and she real she re, uh, she admitted she would never have done that if the roles were reversed. You know, yeah. she wouldn't have wrote anything to him. And uh, so that was a you know more characterization built upon her her personality and and how she's been you know the whole time. Yeah, yeah. So I watched the movie trailer uh, i haven't seen the movie yet but i watched the trailer because i was curious and it feels like it's that one's really built around their relationship and is is that true is that does the movie is she as cold in the movie as she is in the book it feels like not just based on like no. the bits i caught in the trailer so i, I would say the narrative structure of the entire film is based around their relationship. I mean, that's, that's the bit I actually thought when we started reading this book that they had eschewed the relationship altogether, mm. which I thought was sort of interesting because it didn't come into like chapter with chapter two, the end of chapter two, three, whereas the whole Freeman narrative for the film is about her husband. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And the and part that I highlighted about her, uh, it said, I loved him, but I didn't need him. And mm -hmm. I thought that was the way it was supposed to be. And that was really like, okay. That made me understand like very succinct way of explaining mm -hmm. their relationship, I guess, from her point of view. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that. Hmm. One interesting question that was brought up is uh, she, she mentions that she was wondering if members of the 11th expedition have been able to return without are noticing and was wondering couldn't other things have already gotten through as well and that's wasn't answered in this book it's kind of left hanging in the air and yeah. uh, i was like no oh, i want no i want to know something <laughs> yeah i think there's a lot of threads that are you know 
I don't know if they'll be answered in the next two books, but they're there for us to feel cosmic dread over, I suppose, the the lighthouse keeper, for instance, this thing where the doppelgangers are just casually going to the tower and then coming out in, on the other side of the world, apparently. And um, yeah, and, and like, what the heck is the crawler doing? What is the tower? I guess we didn't get that answered either. So... It almost what Earth said about the. Sorry, go ahead, Varshana. Go ahead. Oh no, no, I, uh, no, I was done. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just saying. I was just thinking what you said, Jared, about them possibly like stuff has already been leaving the zone. That was, like you said, very chilling, very terrifying because yeah. it's that sort of thing. Because from the beginning, we've been told there's a barrier, right? Right, and you can enter yeah. and exit this zone. Uh, and then slowly, slowly, this barrier is being eroded when we found the journals. And she's like, oh, this existed from a lot longer than we thought. Before there was a barrier, this was a bit undefined, something. Maybe something existed already in this area before Area X happened. And now we see that things are coming out of it. And it's that sort of thing where humans put like barriers just because they can say, OK, what's outside is safe, is unsafe, and what's inside is safe. But when, when you have, once you have something that breaks the barrier, like maybe you have a home intrusion or you have something happen and you're like, your home is not safe, for example, or your camp feels not safe or whatever. It's like very primal and terrifying sort of. Hmm. But it's interesting because I don't know what to be terrified of. So we know that there are strange things that are happening here with like the transformations. And I think she, what some of the plant samples she took had human cells in them. And I guess the bit from the anthropologist, was it uh, the sample of the crawler that also looked human? So yeah, so she, she has come to this conclusion that there's a lot of like transformations that are happening. And she has this vague notion about like the dolphins, maybe her husband or an eagle or whatever, right? But that that feels like a product of the area. What came out of it? Maybe it's the sense of dread that they were all talking about. This feeling that you know whatever made the psychologist jump off of the tower, or uh, I think whatever some of the people documented in the journals that they were um, that they had to that they felt like they needed to run away from and hide themselves in the tower in the lighthouse for. Um, Maybe that could have escaped, perhaps, but that that feels like it's firmly planted in this area. So, like, what the doppelgangers are scary, but like, what what can they do? Uh, or yeah, the, it, they can like bring parts of area. They can create new area X's. They, I don't know. They bring mm -hmm. like a shard mm -hmm. of whatever creates it to somewhere else, and they start creating a new one, maybe. Yeah, I, yeah, or something. Like I don't know. I kind of felt like there were spores like from area X. Like they were like spores that it was spreading, yeah. like seeds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's yeah. it's just more parts of area X, and then the whole world could transform into, yeah. It's it's also not clear whether she's actually safer in the area X or outside the area X. You know, with the uh, mm. thing things going, and she sort of is implying that she feels safer there. You know, part of her reason for being there, but she belongs there. But she also feels that that's. That's the place to be. Whereas, obviously, there's this threat to, if you want to call it the real world or whatever way you want to do with the expanded mm. borders and the, and the threat that maybe that poses to life outside the area. And are we safer with her in there too? I mean, it seems like she's been compromised. Mm. So maybe it was like a self-sacrifice type of thing where she she knew that things that happened to her, she wasn't comfortable leaving because she didn't know what would happen. But I kind of, I, the whole time I kind of felt like she wanted to stay, that she was happy there. I think even the psychiatrist or one of the other characters tells her that, like, you're happy here, aren't you? And she seemed like she was. She seemed like she, she liked to be isolated and, you know, in, in her work and, and in nature and observing. And it seems like this is a perfect, it's kind of a, it's, I don't know, it's kind of like a happy, in a way, like a happy ending. I don't know. It's like she, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, she's one with her environment, which is what she's apparently <laughs> ever wanted. Happy for her, but not that happy for me. I want some more information. 
Because <laughs> another question I had was, she said our superiors had told us during training something, you know, about where Area X ended or something like that. Uh, so, in fact, I knew nothing at all. Like, she doesn't know if this, her superiors were lying to her. Mm. But we, we still really don't know who these superiors are. Like, who are these people that are putting together these expeditions and stuff? That's just <laughs> still a big unknown for me. I mean, you could say, you know, the government or something like that. But there's got to be something more to it than that. And Yeah. You know, I'm I'm still I'm still unless unless I miss something, I'm still uh, like I got questions. It's interesting too because she has been. I mean, the psychologist told her that nobody has returned from Area X, right? So she's acknowledging that everybody who ever did return are probably these toppling anger things that we saw, but. So she can't have been the first one to have this thought that if those can come out, what else can come out of Area X? It's not a clearly differentiated border. So are they taking any action in the outside world to protect against that? Uh, and if the situation really is that scary, why are you giving them all this crapped out equipment to go do the investigation? Like, what are you trying to do with it? Why did a psychologist go if she knew nobody comes out? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That too, yeah. She, yeah. Was, she was influenced. She was hypnotized. Psychologist was ah. also hypnotized. Mm. And you wonder too, did, did, the, did her superiors lie because they're trying to mislead her? Or are they going off the information that the people who came back from the expeditions told them? So maybe they don't know. Yeah. So they're misinformed. And it's what only what Area X wants them to know. The, I'm just trying to watch Dan's reaction through all this to see if I can. <laughs> yeah, I normally do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the journals are all left there, so it. I, I feel like sometimes Dan deliberately confuses us, and <laughs> like at least through Bazak, I know that you do that. <laughs> yeah, I for sure say theories which I know are not true, but sound plausible. <laughs> just so you. No, but not it's genius, else. isn't it? It's it's also a great great thing. A beard's really good for hiding a lot of actually small micro reactions. You know, I, I'm pretty. I'm not seeing the benefits of a beard quite quite clearly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> aside from the rugged good looks, you know, what else has uh, yeah. friends benefits? You know, mm. yeah. I can tell you a little bit. We're going to get an answer to a lot of these questions in the next books. Cool. Sure. I feel like this book is a lot of posing questions a lot of yeah. kind of giving you a, um, a clue story for a person that basically their journey or their journey so that almost as if and we get this a bit bit more than one journey but as if you had gone in yourself into area x and your experience that you would have been through and the things that you would have found and so you see basically one person's narrative to come through and then we get to explore that world and then from a maybe a pull back the camera kind of thing that's what i'm kind of hoping uh, coming next, but I, th I think that's a nice way to do it. In fact, is to give you that singular experience of one person, singular point of view, because they could have obviously done four here, five possibly. You know, jump between mm. them quite quite easily. I think that oh, would right. been the the um, the popular thing to do for a book like this would have been to do that. But I think that the idea is that you get one one viewpoint, one kind of theory, one kind of thing taken over in one person's head without kind of having multiple perspectives, which maybe pulls back the veneer maybe too much. Yeah, yeah. I think if it did like multiple perspectives, it would have shifted the focus from it being her own personal journey to yeah. it being like us trying to figure out, okay, if these four people are seeing different things, what's the common things, what's actually happening? But that's not like the point of it. It's the point is most her personal journey. Yeah, I think even about her relationship, for instance, like, yeah, it's her personal journey. And even at the end of all of this, it's still confusing about what to believe her about or like how seriously to take her on various aspects right because like what you said Dan that she wants to feel closer to her husband uh now or she feels like she can so it does feel like she cares about him quite a bit right but she and and the bit about I love you but I don't need you it's the way she talks about it I almost got the sense that she doesn't have any affection for him but that's clearly not true so it's it's just like the 
the language she uses and the way that the distance that we have from her even though it's a first person narrative just because she seems like a cold distance distant person i think it makes it very interesting like what do i believe her how seriously do i take her on these things like so many wild theories like um <laughs> about people are dolphins now <laughs> <laughs> okay you want to believe her but also you know you've had is is that a theory yeah. or like what basis do you have for thinking that yeah but we're seeing how she relates to her environment and how to other people and how people relate to other people is very subjective so it's i think also read an interview of him talking about his new book uh which i haven't read but he was talking about how he likes to talk about how humans relate and interact with the environment both like the actual environment and urban environments and how urban environments interact with natural environments and create their own special types and this feels very much like that it's like her relating to her environment both the human and the uh, natural and how that can it's a cross pollination sort of thing right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah but yeah uh uh i like the point you made earlier Fosher, when you first started was i i think i was also disappointed we didn't get the journal mm. like we didn't see the journal entries rather than she just yeah. said mm. like she was just like he wrote this you mm. know and then and then he further on he wrote this and i was like oh, i kind of wanted to see the journal entries yeah. but maybe but maybe to dan's observation there maybe that would have taken away from yeah. the her uh you know interaction mm. so i don't know it's uh and when i was reading it the first time i wanted to see the journal entries entries but you know would it would it also have sort of um uh, broken this framing thing we have where this right. is we are reading her journal right like mm -hmm. we are uh one of the people sent to an expedition on area x and we found her notebook she says at the end that she's tied up her husband's notebook along with hers and she's left it there so it wouldn't necessarily make sense if she quoted directly from it just like summarizing the bits that are relevant to yeah. what she yeah. wants to write about that i mean it, it also makes sense in the context of the structure of the right. book i it, think it, it makes sense <laughs> Like talking about it now, it kind of makes mm. sense the way it was done. But wh while I was yeah. reading it, I yeah. wanted the journal entries, you know. So it, it's kind of a back and forth. <laughs> I, I agree with you. I I would have loved some actual sentences. Even we didn't even get full sentence <laughs> quotes. It was just, oh, he said this to Ghost Bird. Uh, okay, <laughs> or maybe there were a few sentence quotes. But there were a few. But yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's 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 so interesting because I sort of. I'm much happier in a world where there's only questions, if that makes sense. Mm. Like, I think that's the fun part of it is like, as soon as I get answers, my dreams are going to be shattered one way or another. But until <laughs> until we get to that period, I'm like, this book is just so full of possibilities and full of ideas that like anything's possible at the moment. And everything that I think is right. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I think it's pretty consistent, though, that we we don't get direct quotes from it, or we don't get you know lines because it's it's the whole time we've seen it through her eyes. It's it's the unreliable narrator we've had consistently. So if we if we get something that's outside of her mm -hmm. interpretation of things, then it it almost breaks the whole like the like the whole um, kind of pace or like feeling we've had yeah. the whole time. We've we've seen everything through her everything comes through her to us so i think that's what makes you feel so personal as we you feel like you're sitting down talking to her and it's like you're almost there with her and uh, mm -hmm. hearing or seeing you know what she's going through so yeah it's uh, and i think it, it adds to the mystery too of i wonder what is that like what what did he write and what 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 did he write and how did she interpret it because she has been compromised she's not she may not be thinking clearly so is what she read really what he wrote or is that what she wanted? Is it is the journal even there? <laughs> Ooh. Nice. Oh boy. Yeah, or, or was it really her husband's journal? I, I guess it was because there were references to Ghost Bird apparently, but yeah. Mm. 
Uh, yeah. So that yeah, that that's a good point, and it leads to uh, it really leads to um, realizing that Vandermeer was did that for a reason, and uh, that's probably what it was. Yeah. So on the subject of a lot of open-ended questions in this, I feel like, I mean, I don't know that a lot of trilogies do this, but I have heard recently complaints about first books in a series that they aren't self-contained and they have a lot of open-ended questions. They feel like they're doing too much setup mm. and whatnot. I feel like this would be true that all of those quote unquote criticisms would be true of this book, but like it's, it's still pretty perfect. It's a very satisfying read. So do you think that this book would have done, done as well now or would people just have railed at it for not answering any questions by the end? Hmm. I think it's such a satisfying read. I mean, it's, it's kind of that idea that not all books have to be the same thing, right? They, not, they don't have to conform to a formula. And if books did have to conform to a formula, then actually the the art of, of writing or otherwise would, would be lost then because you know it would feel kind of and one of the things that makes this book so good is is that it dares not to it dares mm. to kind of say like i'm just going to do nothing but questions and i'm sort of going to answer them with more questions <laughs> of a similar type but that will do that thing that we always talk about is that you just make the questions more interesting. <laughs> you add yeah. another layer on top of it and you kind of go, well, you thought this was a problem, but actually it's it's on a slightly higher level or there's something more to it. So the fact that she's decided to say, so the fact that she's glowing, the fact that she's phosphorus, the fact that the mass and area of this place is increasing, all feel linked. And they all feel mm. cleverly enough linked that, that, that it kind of feels that the answer to one of those questions will give us the answer to a lot of them as opposed to maybe something else like true detectives that we're going steve made a lovely post we're watching at the moment of about 35 questions that need answered in that last episode uh, <laughs> and they all feel like separate questions whereas i think for this book i think one answer one main answer would mm -hmm. actually encompass a lot of it and and i think that's what makes it incredibly satisfying to read is that you sort of feel that you're on a journey to one specific end and one specific place that once we see what's there, we'll actually have at least a satisfying answer to the questions, whether we still left with open in the questions, because it does seem like a place of mystery anyway. So, you know, I yeah. feel like even if it was just the first book, like you can read it as just a sort of like a sci-fi short story. Like, if yeah. you think mm -hmm. about what actually happened, like, that could really be just a sci-fi short story, right? I, it could have been just, you can just read the first book and just be happy with that if you want. But it could just be her story and just a personal story as reflective of a sci-fi situation, right? That would be enough content for me. Obviously, mm -hmm. there's more books, but... <laughs> Thankfully. <laughs> Thankfully. Hmm. So, Dan, without giving us spoilers, do you feel like the first book sets up the rest of the trilogy pretty well? So, or it's, there's going to be a change of pace. I'm just going to say that. It's first book is a bit different than the other two. Hmm. So don't expect more of the same. It's somewhat of the same, but also different. That's, that's, that's not an answer. That's one, that's one of my dad's friends. Did you write this stuff? Did you write? Are you Jeff Vandermeer? <laughs> just answered a I question. Wish, I wish. That's not what my dad says when you ask him a question. He goes, "It's exactly the same." Don't worry. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. Yeah. Someone, someone once yelled at we me because I it. said. <laughs> Because something I said I was like you. You could. It, it's like saying it may rain or it may not rain. Like that. That was no information. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Either it rains or it doesn't rain. Right. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> there are two possibilities. <laughs> and each is exactly fifty-fifty. I don't know. See, see if you were, see if you were British, 
there's such different minute different stages of rain that actually there are about 50 different states in between and british are very very fascinated you know things like spitting as a as a, as a thing of rain is its own state you know of thing it should have been classified and should it's be in your spectrum. yes it is a spectrum indeed this not <laughs> rain rain stuff is just no i'm sorry that that lot why should <laughs> it's, it's like when you can tell all the whites apart <laughs> because you're an interior designer or something <laughs> So how uh, creepy was it? How really? creepy would it be? How creepy would it be for to see yourself walking? To see a doppelganger of yourself walking stiffly away? <laughs> I don't see. Or was it the doppelganger? Was that her? Mm. Well, I don't know. This was in her husband's journal. So it was her husband. It was a husband saying he was seeing a doppelganger of, her, of himself walking away and i'm not sure uh i kind of wondered if there's some time stuff going on here too like the mm. time doesn't the time doesn't work the same in area x as it does everywhere else so i wonder if there's some kind of that they're overlapping or something and and she also said something about stars that this the sky doesn't look familiar to her that's right yeah. like that border <laughs> it's is it it could be i mean in theory some sort of like entrance to another world or something but the border's expanding taking over their world but it she could in theory be in a different planet which would also explain the time thing i suppose um but yeah what's yep. the door at the bottom of a tower say that again what's the door at the bottom of a tower yeah Oh yeah, the portal, yeah. right? That uh -huh. where, where's the lead? As she got closer, what was it that prevented her from getting any closer? Was it that mm. she couldn't stand the loudness of the heartbeat of the tower? So just to stand being there, it was just so terrifying. Mm -hmm. But she didn't say she didn't know why. It was just just she couldn't. Do right. you think that's the entrance they used to come up? That they get hypnotized and they come out through the tower. She did feel like uh, she did say when she turned away, like she felt like someone was watching her through the entrance. Mm -hmm. That part was also right. very creepy for me. Yeah, mm. yeah. And and didn't she see a light too, or something like that? Or like they, it was like the entrance was like the light. Yeah, light yeah, was yeah, From yeah, that yeah. entrance, right? Yeah. Mm. The tower. So the I slightly related to the subject of <laughs> watching doppelgangers walk away. I feel like the the summarization of the husband's journal, it gave a very casual air to everything that he wrote. Like the fact that there were doppelgangers just chilling, oh we got to the border, we it was fine, like we couldn't get to the end of it. And the the fact that they found all those journals that was such a big moment for us such a big moment for her but she summarized it as if almost as if they thought it was nothing right like yeah they were they're like yeah cool we found this we got scared too and now we're okay with it so i guess the summarization aspect of it also gives this sort of distance i didn't think to feel creeped out about the doppelgangers until you brought it up jared i think it was Probably something to do with the way that that information was conveyed to us, or maybe I just didn't read it closely yeah. enough. <laughs> and they said that they were also contemplating whether they should kill them or whether they should, you know, interrogate them. Hmm. And uh, but I, I just I, I couldn't even get like to that point. I was like, wait a minute, you're you're seeing yourself. I mean, that's how much that would freak me out, you know? Yeah. And a whole army of them. And maybe he was freaked out. Like, we are just getting her summary. Right, we're version. getting her summary, yeah. The, yeah. And she's being, like, all calm and cool about it, yeah. Yeah. Huh. And and I guess she is, because at this point, she's like, yes, it's, it's maybe not really an explanation, but it's something that it wasn't her husband who came out, but what was it then? Was his mind yep. left behind? Um he was left behind in his entirety, but there's this new creepy doppelganger. So I guess she had a mystery there that was sort of solved. So maybe that's why we had this, um, mm, yeah. like, 
not a very dire heir to that. And he's just a dolphin now. Yeah, or an eagle, <laughs> or <laughs> the what? second book has a rabbit on it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, what animal would you all want to be? You know, <laughs> I'd, I'd pick a bird. Birds. There's always a bigger bird version. That's true. Dolphins. You have human eyes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's strongly hinted that that's her husband, right? Yeah. I mean, the dolphin. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it is or not, but you know, I, I think she was more po she was more postulating that it could be. You yeah. know what I mean? That, that it very much, you know, in this world, she's accepted that that's reasonable. You know, that's that's that 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 that. Oh, if he was a dolphin, I'd be fine with it. You know, I'd, yeah. I'd be I'd be okay with it. I thought the more interesting question was about uh, who the lighthouse keeper was. Yeah. I thought I thought that question when she looked at it was going to be one of those things. It's actually me, you know. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. But actually, before we go start talking about lighthouse keeper, because I have to go soon. Uh, <laughs> I just want to leave you with a couple of quotes I thought were really good, and then yeah. I'll leave. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I had a quote from last time, which was when they found the all the books, uh, all the journals at the top of a lighthouse. Uh, she says that they've been written moments when the individuals must have thought death was upon them. So many needing so much to communicate what amounted to so little. Mm. That was very powerful to me. It made me think of, I don't know, maybe it's a bit cynic, but how much humans want to communicate with other people, so much writing, so many things is so abundant and so little of it actually hasn't impact i guess or seen by other people but the need of people to communicate to others about their experience like the desperate need but there's like i don't know that that struck me very it was a very powerful quote and then the other interesting one that i had was let me see if it's fifth one uh the other one i think we already did was about area x when she's thinking about the expeditions. And she says, no one had as yet plumbed the depths of intent or purpose in a way that had obstructed that intent or purpose. Hmm. That's yeah. actually a very useful observation. Hmm. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that was one of the things that I think scared me like those are one of the creeping dread things that uh, it, it was in the uh, passage where she talks about what could have left area x2 right um, or she uses that to come to that conclusion when she's talking about the journals again and about how all the experiences of people inside area x mm. and she sort of like well, try, well, she's trying to figure out, I think, why this is happening or what is happening. And she's like, well, we haven't really, we're just sort of being assimilating to the system. We haven't perturbed it. We haven't, we're not asking the right question. We're not going to what's actually the source or the truth or what's doing this, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's entering its that, own you know, cycle I, of expeditions, yeah. right? That, that they're not asking the right questions to get to figuring out what it is. Yeah. I like that. I like both the quotes. Do you have any more? <laughs> one. It's a bit sad, though, but... Well, that's just, um, yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> Relax that. Um, it's when she's thinking about... She's reading her, his journal, and um, she's realizing that he's not as she thought he was yeah. and she says all he'd ever wanted was for me to open up to him and as a result he had always been there for the taking now though i would have had i would have to take him as i found him and it would probably be forever and i found the truth of that intolerable she's like she she's like well it's too late now this is what i have 
this is I cannot mm. change what happened. I cannot be better in the past. I cannot have it, maybe a relationship she might have wanted that would have made them closer. And this is just what she has, and she has to just take it as it is. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> yep, and uh, that's yeah, that's very. Uh, I mean, it's also a very practical view on her point. You know, she's not. Um, She's not getting over emotional about what she didn't realize she had. She's accepting what it was, and then, and then saying, "This is what I have now." You know, and uh, she's kind of, uh, I guess, treasuring that in a kind of way. Mm -hmm. That's a good, actually, more that practical. That's how describe her. I think that perfectly describes her. It's very <laughs> right. Yeah. She does ask. Thanks for listening to my quotes. I have to <laughs> leave now. Thanks for a great discussion. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. Sorry, really, Dan. Yeah. I'll talk to you next week. Bye. Yeah. Well, next Bye. Week. Bye. Bye then. Yeah. And she does she does ask, uh, was I in the end stages of some prolonged form of annihilation, which is, you know mm. quotes the book title, but um, mm. uh, what does that mean exactly? Annihilation? A, a prolonged form of annihilation. So that was the, I, that was the term that the psychologist used to try to ask yeah, her to kill herself, that. right? Oh, yeah. right. I, I, yeah. So what I interpreted from that was just she was wondering if that signal was still working and she's yeah. still okay. engaging in some form of self destruction. But I don't know if it has. A deeper interpretation or a different interpretation than that. Yeah. No, I forgot about that. That's right. Yeah. So she's dead, but not quite dead yet. Mm -hmm. And and she's decided that she's going to let the brightness take over. She's like, I'm not going to keep mutilating myself so I can stay human. I'd rather become one with the environment. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So the lighthouse keeper then. Hmm. And and also, I guess, similar but related subject, the the fact that she kind of sort of drowned, but not really. The feeling she had when she saw the crawler, that that was interesting. It had to be a psychological effect, right? Not a physical drowning. Well, if we assume that the door is a gateway to somewhere it's either a gateway to another part of area x or a gateway home mm. and it, for me if i assume it's the way home then she's not ready to leave yet you know she's not ready to mm. go yet she's she's not um she's got other things to do or either that or she can't in her physical state she she, she can't mm. go or, or something about the change in her is stopping her from going which could be interesting yeah, because she said it was the sensation of drowning. And she felt it was an illusion. Yeah. And mm -hmm. she didn't experience it when she went back past the crawler. Oh, my yeah. God. That scene was terrifying. When she knew that she had to return and walk past the crawler, that, yeah. that she had to go through the drowning thing again. And, yeah, and she was worried about enduring the light again and, and expecting this rush of the sea into her mouth. and uh, But but then none of it happened. No, the, cr <laughs> the crawler no longer displayed interest in her. And I was like, I wrote, why? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, why didn't the crawler explain? I was like, what's going on here? Oh, another question I don't know the answer to. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah. And I can't see Dan's face right now, so no, 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 yeah. no hit. <laughs> Did get excuse me, another reason I wonder if this is like a time <clears throat> if we're playing with time is because when she picked up the picture of the lighthouse of the lighthouse keeper, was it she she said it feels like someone else has done this or yeah. someone else has picked this up and done the same thing. So it kind of felt like there's some Something with time going on, or some kind of something. Mm. Yeah, because she puts some, it back. Some sort of loop. Yeah. Oh, I like that. I that would be very interesting if there's added aspects of time here. 
that. I like that. Mm -hmm. So what did we want to say about the lighthouse keeper? Did we finish talking about him or do we, I feel like we covered everything um, otherwise. It's, it's an interesting one because it, it sort of alludes to the fact that we know who this person is. If that mm. makes sense, it sort of almost did that reveal of when she looked closer, she could see that actually behind the beard, it was a psychologist. <laughs> <laughs> or something to that effect. I mean, I, I was almost sure it was going to be her husband. Uh, to be oh. perfectly honest, that, 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 I thought that's definitely where that was going. You know, a kind of much older version or whatever of her mm. husband. But I think she would have, she would have recognized him if that had been the case. Yeah, yeah. I kind of felt like it had to be someone who's been around a very long time in Area X. Maybe someone from the first expedition or something. But uh, it makes sense that it would be so the lighthouse keeper gives us sort of an anchor, right, to keep coming back and yes. and also the sense that he was probably there, like he was part of the village before the expedition started coming in. Apparently, he was part of the the area but whenever the event happened whatever it was did we also get a hint of what the event was was it just a storm hmm. I, don't know. I don't think we know yet we no. don't know yet she seemed to refer to the event and some activity that happened during the event activity <laughs> so i think it and i think it she mentioned it as a storm but i, I could be misremembering but uh, I think I think what you, what we find that the lighthouse keeper is is a common thread from book to book. There has to be a mm -hmm. couple of things that are that are from book to book, and and certainly we'll have the places. We'll have the lighthouse. We'll probably have the tunnel slash tower. Uh, but I think we need people, and there are so few people to bring us mm. across that I think that's what the lighthouse keeper will have to be. It'll have to be a character that appears for somebody else's journey or to do with somebody else that, that we can kind of go, ah, we know a bit about you rather than mm. everybody being brand new uh, going forward. So I would, yeah. I would speculate that that's what that character is rather than us maybe knowing him or knowing enough about him. It's about carrying forward. Makes sense. Yeah. Prepare to be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that, that makes sense. <laughs> this... Oh, there was one bit of, uh, when she saw the crawler that I thought was interesting that she thought, once again, I don't know if these are wild speculations on her part or if she has some basis that she's not sharing with us for coming to these conclusions. Like she says that uh, she thinks the the crawler pulled how she looked to how the crawler looked to her based on images that she had in her head of what the crawler might be. Like almost like it's creating an illusion based on her um, mental imagery, which makes sense that it would have the ability to do because it made her think that she was drowning. So it can control her mentally somehow, it seems like. And, um, and there was, yeah, one other thing that she said about the crawler, which was that, you know, it had read her mind in effect, right? That's kind of what happened to her there. And she said that she, it knew me in a way that it didn't know the anthropologist. How did you know that? <laughs> what basis did you have for coming to that conclusion? So those were interesting, but, and again, like they don't feel like mistakes or oversights in the writing. It feels more like deliberate, like she, had reasons for thinking that that she's not sharing with us you don't think maybe she's just getting a little more i don't know wishy-washy as she as she goes along because there was one point where she was like uh you know a, a swimming pool a rocky bay an empty lot a tower a lighthouse these things are real and not real they exist and they don't exist mm -hmm. and she goes back and forth like that. And that whole paragraph, I was like, well, that seems a bit back and forth. It seems a bit wishy-washy. And I'm like, mm. that wasn't what we were seeing from her at the beginning of the book. You know, she was very straightforward, scientific. That's and uh, and now we're starting to see 
and maybe that's because of the result of the interaction with the with the creeper thing crawler thing mm -hmm. and um maybe that has had an effect on her uh on her psyche yeah yeah mm. maybe the yeah uh that, that's possible too it's possible that she just like lost her mind and she's drawing all kinds of conclusions to stay sane and give herself explanations but the other possibility perhaps is the crawlers not just taking also transplanting information in the psychological <laughs> uh interaction that they had did it did i'm trying to yeah okay it was a different book i was <laughs> trying to think if this was uh if if she referred to this as some sort of uh mental rape i don't think it was this book i think i think that's a different book that i'm reading but that that that's not a word she used right so <laughs> okay <laughs> Uh, she uses assimilation. She uses mm. manifestation, integration, uh, integration. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Different book. <laughs> You're getting your reads mixed up. I can't believe that's happening. <laughs> <laughs> you could have predicted to... something like this could happen. You only read like fifteen. Come on. Uh, Jeez. <laughs> oh shame. <laughs> only fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's the thing, the stories all blend into each other and I'm reading one mega story that's I'm I'm having a better experience if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> well I was gonna I was gonna ask that people's opinions are the down from what they thought it would be when we finished obviously chapter three and four last week, everybody was like this is really um going places. Uh, but like I mean you can Without being disappointed, you can also be a little bit, uh, it didn't quite do what I wanted it to do, or maybe my expectations were too high for other people. Was that, is, is that true for anybody or? Yeah, that's true for me. Yeah. I think my yeah. expectations were a bit higher than where they probably should have been. Uh, mm -hmm. especially considering, cause I wasn't, I didn't have in the forefront of my mind that this is a trilogy I had, I'm going to finish this book, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, and so I don't think this chapter was the strongest in the book. Uh, hmm. I thought the, I thought the started out with a bang, like really was interesting and it just kept going. And so I think this chapter out of all of them was probably not my favorite, but I, yeah. it's not that I didn't love it. I still, yeah. I still think it's great, but, uh, but if I had to, Freedom. Yeah, this one would be. I think that's fair because it doesn't. It doesn't really wrap up. If you know what I mean, it doesn't give it any kind of resolution or satisfying resolution. Resolution, other than kind of say, "Oh, we'll have all the stuff we're juggling still." <laughs> kind of didn't really expect any resolutions. I kind of see this as a because it is a trilogy, so I didn't really expect too much from. Kind of expected certain things to be wrapped up, but. I think part of it was that I that we know that the people will change the next book, so maybe that changed my expectations too. Because if I hadn't known that, then I probably would be disappointed going into two. Hmm. I think I was surprised that even some of the information we did get, like I mean, sure, it wasn't a proper look, but we get, got to see the crawler, we got to see all the way to the end of the tower. Um, I mean, based on the number of pages left and where we were at the end of chapters three and four, I wasn't expecting a lot of resolution. Uh, if if I thought that it was a standalone, I can see how that would be disappointing. But yeah, trilogy page count <laughs> at the end of chapter four. I was like, yeah, it, I, I think at this point, all I'm expecting is that she'll crawl somewhere, write the journal, and either become part of the ship, part of the crew, or, you know, die. Uh, and, uh, and that's all I was expecting for chapter four. That she'd read the husband's journal, that would be the main event, and maybe that'll tell yeah. us something. Maybe it won't, but that's about it. Um, so what we got with the crawler and stuff and the additional mystery around the lighthouse keeper actually cementing that as a good mystery, right? Because before it was just... Oh, there's this picture that I randomly, for some reason, think that 
it circles around quite a lot that everybody carries it in their pockets and then brings it back here cementing the lighthouse keeper as a mystery i think yeah sure it started another mystery but it it's a like chris said it it would be an excellent connecting thread for the next two books cool nice. cool yeah so, great book though overall yeah yeah, yeah. i think fantastic solid solid five star <laughs> read for me I, one of four five star reads for me this week like how ridiculous is wow. that like, wow. just, <laughs> that's i mean uh, ev and every si single one of them felt rock solid you know in terms mm. of being right this is pretty great did you just give away what you thought of lot of light <laughs> um let's uh i don't know <laughs> <laughs> I have what would amount to about five pages of A4 notes for that book. Let's put it that way. Oh, wow. but, uh, yeah, nice. I have a lot. Nice. Oh. Okay. I'm really excited for Sunday. I'm 50 pages in and I'm already like, oh, this is great. I'll see how it goes, but yeah. it's off to a good start. Anyway, uh, <laughs> a yeah. lot of light. <laughs> now you have not to five stars, it. though. What what I can categorically say was not five stars was our other story. <laughs> Good segue, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're moving on to discussing. Oh, um, if you're only here with us for the annihilation discussion, uh, we're going to be reading up to chapter six for Let's next. Start of chapter six. Yeah, to the end to the end of chapter six or to the start? Yeah, the end of chapter five, I think it is at the, the start of chapter six. Five chapters, yeah. Okay, five, five chapters. chapters. We're gonna be reading five chapters of authority for next week and the short story The Stars. The star the, or the, the stars. Star. The, the star. star. Singular. Singular. There's <laughs> only one of them, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> by H.G. Wells. Yes. <laughs> the the short story is available uh, on Project Gutenberg. I'll try and add the link in the description to the podcast. Nice. But um, yeah, if you'd like to read along with us, it's available for free online. Now we're going to talk about what we did not like about what we saw in <laughs> Liking What You See, a documentary by Ted Chang. Chris has his face in his hands. I, 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 can't, for our I, can't, listeners. I can't start with this one. This He's is... turning red. Oh my gosh. What a way to end the book. What a way to end the book. I thought this was capital D dreadful. <laughs> Tell me more. I, I actually did not think it was too bad. I. Maybe because I had talked to you and Jared yeah. last week and um, I expected to hate it. And I didn't hate it. I can't say it's not my favorite story on the list, but it was all right. I, it is what I've come to expect of the story. So I like that's I a that go first. <laughs> <laughs> what? Sorry. I was going to say, I let others go first, first on, on why they hit it, because, you know, if I yeah, start, I might be able to stop myself, you know. <laughs> uh, okay, well, go ahead. I had low expectations going in, um, because I'm not a big fan of documentaries, to begin with. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, when you title a story a documentary, I'm kind of like, okay, hmm. Uh, but it was okay. Yeah, it was just okay. It was just you had these um, you had these characters with all these different points of view uh, talking about this subject, um, and they had these. It, it was what was it a, a uh, an implant or something like that that made them? Yeah, pretty pretty much. It was like an mm -hmm. inbuilt kind of Google Glass. If you yeah, want, if you don't yeah. have it, it's like surgery they could do to kind of mess with the rock the nerve or whatever it was that like. that you know messed with your facial recognition abilities uh in your brain and um which you know that's a scientific idea and typical of of all the stories in this book he has his he has his idea and then he spouts out stuff around it um 
I just I thought it was repetitive. Uh, like in thirty four pages too long out of the thirty six pages that the short the story was. Uh, so I I think it could have been summed up so much quicker. Um, and uh, I don't know. I just uh, I wish it didn't go on that long. I think it. I don't know. Maybe I would have preferred a more typical story based around it, because um, it was it it didn't seem to really have that, uh, you know, that tip the beginning, middle, end type of thing for a story. It was it was like a documentary, and most documentaries I see on TV, I'm like, will you people shut up and hurry up and get to the next person so I can find <laughs> out what they, what they're gonna say. Uh, they always go on too long about what they're talking about, and I was just like, get to the next person, you know. Uh, so that was that was you know wasn't the most enjoyable story in the book by far. Mm. <laughs> Steve loved it. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it's over. I'm glad we're done. <laughs> can I just make it? Can I just make it a request? If you're going to have a short story collection, put short stories in it. Don't put novelettes in them and call them short stories. This isn't a short story. This is a novelette. Stop. You're not all, you know, uh, Stephen King loves to do that kind of shit. Like, yeah. make a short story. Don't make a 40, 40 pages isn't a short story. Uh, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just glad. I'm just glad it's over. Mainly. Like, I'm just <laughs> glad we're done. That was painful. There was like, yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't want to be disparaging. I just, I know like some people really love this kind of, like I, yeah. I checked the reviews of the book and people love it. Like it's four or five stars and people, and so maybe I'm just an idiot and that's completely possible. Well, I am an idiot. So that's why, but whatever. I mean, I'm just glad it's over. So thankfully, yeah. mercifully it's over. <laughs> <We're done. clears throat> you want to go, Chris? Not yet. <laughs> I I actually did not dislike it. I think of all the stories, this was the one that I felt most willing to forgive the length of. Um, I think the length is a result of the format, which, you know, I, I think the format is really cool. I wish it was about a different subject. The documentary format, something that is more interesting to me or something that I care about more. But yeah, it's... Um, he started several threads, right? Like with following different people, getting their opinions, changing the situation a little bit, fo following their opinions. So like you have four or five people you have to get opinions from every time for the documentary. And each person we were with for a short enough time that the length of the story overall didn't bother me very much. And yeah, the subject is something that I'm vaguely interested in. I don't necessarily agree with, uh, I mean, once again, I think the, the story notes at the end kind of are doing a disservice to the story that I would like it more if it wasn't for the story notes at the end, because um, while we did get balanced perspectives throughout about, you know, both for and against the Cali in the story notes, Chang outright comes and says, I would get Callie, like I'm for <laughs> the thing. And I'm like, that that can't be your go to. <laughs> like that yeah. the I, I don't I don't like the idea that this is um that we cut off how we feel rather than educate because there are larger problems <laughs> at the base of that. The fact that you're willing to discriminate. And, and I think one of them comes up like in, in the ad that is apparently propaganda. Someone says, "Oh, um, you don't learn. Like you, you don't mature the way you should. If you know you are an adult who has these default revulsions to things that you think aren't pretty, and then <laughs> as a child, and then you get over it and you learn to respect other things. You don't have that growth if you suddenly have Cali removed. And like, there are people who are like, no, I, that's not. That doesn't agree with my experience. But I, I sort of think." that that would be <laughs> for me like that that's the most sane thread in all of this so yeah like it gave me i think as a short story 
or a sci-fi story that's exploring a certain idea i felt like for me it was sufficiently satisfying in that it explored a lot of different points of view and it had some that i agreed with some i vehemently disagreed with and yeah and and i think we could have cut a couple of those <laughs> like I, i i don't know i i didn't need the girl with the boyfriend that she was trying to get back but i also think that she gave us a very important perspective so yeah overall i think this one's pretty in the average for me with the rest of the stories and and like i said like tower of babylon maybe and one or two others i felt like went on for too long like hell is the absence of god for instance that one i thought went on <laughs> for far past my tolerance for the point being made but this one i think i i liked even like i i didn't dislike it for sure and i and i think i even liked it <laughs> <laughs> I think I even liked it. <laughs> um I I'll start off by saying that I actually think the idea like many in this book is actually really interesting. I I I when it first started the first two or three pages I went okay this is something that is incredibly current is incredibly in the face of things you know like my, my kids like pretty much everybody just uses filters all the time on TikTok or Snapchat or whatever else it is to make themselves pay more and you got the glamour filters etc that that are on there i think this is a really interesting idea i have a couple of big problems with it pretty much every perspective in this short story is a female perspective i think that is yeah that's what that, makes that it that i had for me. yeah um basically we, we we had to go six seven perspectives deep before we even got a male one and it was brushed over like the the, mm. the male was the guy that cut off his nose wasn't he like mm. that was the like that was one of them and i thought that 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 If you're going to explore a theme, especially over 40 pages, but the kind of Steve's point, if you're going to write a novelette, you kind of explore it in a more fuller way without kind of these very pithy observations that go on page after page after page. It just felt like a, a slightly different observation of the same point. And mm. a lot of the things that I thought would have been interesting to explore about this weren't going <laughs> we're not explored at yeah. all for all of the different perspectives that we got a lot of the idea about self image there was no real discussion of the fact that actually beauty is a mirror for our own self worth if that makes sense like the reason that that we buy advertising products etc is that we appreciate beauty as a mirror to ourselves so actually if there had been the person that we'd followed through multiple perspectives that kind of used it in their day-to-day -day business but actually turned it off themselves so that they could see themselves because it really I think if it had a bit explored self image a bit more as opposed to the Cali other image I think that would have been really interesting and uh, funny enough the only perspective that I really wanted to follow the whole way through was the one with the boyfriend mm -hmm. and again that one wimped out at the end of actually making a point which happens right the way through this short story collection of like let's explore something but let's pull the plug at the end to kind of say I don't know um mm. i don't know what i think about this at the end and that, that that was a great source of frustration to me when even that didn't resolve in anything yeah it, it, it goes to your point chris about the um the idea in the uh exploring the ideas i i think i would have rather have read an article in a magazine that talked about these ideas in a philosophical and societal you know so manner rather than putting it into the framework of a short story with characters with a perspective i rather would have read an article like in a, like in a, a philosophical like in a free inquiry magazine or something like that and and i just <laughs> that would have been more interesting to me than you know in the idea like the ideas that you brought up the the self worth and 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 all that and how it and 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 maybe you would the article would probably be more about tiktok than it would be about a fake mechanism but uh still that that you know that kind of perspective i think would have been more interesting to me than having it in this this framework of a short story that didn't um didn't explore some of the areas that you mentioned that it should have explored do mm -hmm. do you think he created the documentary kind of structure because he was struggling to formulate a, 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 another way I, i felt like that was part of the you know create an interesting framing device or narrative framing mm -hmm. device in order to push some of these kind of scattered gun approach of ideas that he had that he could just kind of like touch 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 without it being like a cohesive point because it did feel like he didn't have one 
at the end of it, and they kind of just represented all these these little bits. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I I think that I, I I sort of agree that the format does it a bit of a disservice. It's not um like it doesn't do a deeper exploration. And and there's the other idea of um this other product apparently that can make people look pleasant to you, which is a whole other thing. I, I think for me that's the more interesting subject and we didn't even touch the surface of that we just mentioned it so i think yeah the format sort of does the overall idea a bit of a disservice because it's a documentary about the use of cali apparently it's it's not a document uh, no but if it's about liking what you see i don't see why they couldn't have added more perspectives about the other thing which makes things look pretty for you too um but yeah it, maybe maybe he yeah, it's interesting which came first, if he was a prey to the format and so could it make a holistic point or, mm. or, but you could have added a voiceover or something uh, to, you know, draw a conclusion, but the, um, like a transcript of a voiceover and, and, or, or, or if he couldn't figure out the holistic point and then did the format. Sorry, Chris, you were saying? I was just going to say, and maybe I'm being unfair to the point that this was the last story in the series, and a lot of them had done similar things with length and being kind of drawn in a little bit. And maybe by that stage, it was like, not another one, not another mm. one. And because we're getting to the end of it, I'm being a little bit unfair to it. But I did more so than any other story, because most of the other stories I can make a sort of, right, this wasn't, I can see what they're trying to do. And they achieved it to a certain point. By three pages of this, I was done with it. And the next 27, I get nothing else out of, aside from having a main character who was, turned out was a narcissist anyway, so it was all right. Mm -hmm. she, she she turned Kelly off and she wanted everybody else to turn it off because she was pretty. And, and that yeah. was pretty much the whole point of her. And I am going to explore in the fact that even with Kelly off, looks become not important i mean it's sort of said that a little bit at the start you know when you you're in people's company like the attractiveness and all that kind of stuff means nothing after a certain point of veneer um but like, she knew that person like, oh i don't know i'm kind of yeah around a bit but a bit like steve i'm like okay it's done <laughs> <laughs> yeah. with with the boyfriend threat okay i i know i uh i'm gonna take back what i said earlier i i do think that thread may have been something that I liked particularly. But so what appealed to me about that had nothing to do with the subject at hand. It was the fact that she had this, she went on this journey of self-exploration sort of about what she likes. And then maybe she's doing something messed up to get what she wants. I, I, I like, I always like threads like that in a story. So that, that was mildly appealing to me, but that's also why I didn't think it was super necessary to the documentary structure because it wasn't adding much to the <laughs> discussion other than like, oh, there's this silly girl who, who, you know, changed her mind about something because she couldn't get the boy. Or, yeah. I kind of think he was trying to make a statement, trying to make a, like a, a point on discrimination and, our preconceptions um but I, I noticed on the on the wikipedia page uh chang turned down a hugo nomination for the story in 2003 on the grounds that the novelette was rushed due to editorial pressure it did not turn out the way he had really wanted mm. interesting huh? um yeah for i just and well i'm uh, of course if, you know i'm sure a lot of people love this love this collection and that's great and everything but if you compare this to paper menagerie you're insane and you need to be checked by a professional because Pippa Menagerie is is like heads and shoulders, like it is fantastic. So those of you who compare it are, are just insane. insane. <laughs> and to be fair, like Pippa Menagerie is spectacularly good. I think comparing anything, just Pippa Menagerie is kind of a bit dumb, but there are people that definitely have these on a, on a level and exhalation as well, which I will probably read someday, like uh, mm. and see whether he got he refined his craft because I think his ideas are good. I think his ideas and bits that he starts mm. with are good. I think he just needs to decide how much he needs to say about them and actually what he wants to say about them quite at, at the start and kind of work to that point. Yeah, 
That's interesting because that's that was I think that's been a part of my issue with most of the book is I think he tends to over explain yeah. um, quite a bit and because I I st- after I finished this one I started reading Story of Your Life because I missed it you know when you guys read it before oh yes that's right yeah and um, <clears throat> I have a little impromptu episode of reading the prose right here if you guys nice oh, bear with me here. nice uh, god this feels like, in, this feels like a story. treat i wasn't ready for <laughs> in the story right he says um he there's a part where he says our video screens were primitive compared to the heptapods looking glasses so that my colleagues seem more remote than the aliens and then he says the familiar was far away while the bizarre was close at hand that second line basically repeats what he just said in the line before and that's has what been been bugging me about this book as a whole is he does that quite a bit it's like i really didn't need that second line because it repeated what was already said in the line before just with different words Words, and Mm -hmm. uh so i was and i and i that really stood out, out to me when i was reading story of your life and um and I and I went back and I'm like, yeah, that's kind of what he's been doing this whole time, and uh, you know, and that's fine if you if you if you like that, if you and if you want to read um, stuff like that, but I, I I couldn't put my finger on it while I was yeah. when I was going through the collection and reading these stories because you know Fosh is cracking the whip and I got to get them done, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, so, but uh but when i took my time to read that part i was like oh okay that's what it is that's yeah. what's been that's what's been bugging me <laughs> it, it's almost like he writes it again in the bit you know where you're reading in kindle and you go add the notebook <laughs> it's like he restates it again in like a more you know singular kind of idea so you'll add that kind of quote and that can appear then on a thumbnail in the back of the quarter in a review or something yeah. kind of going forward as as, as, a, as an interesting point by itself but, but it, yeah so that's my uh, impromptu reading the prose. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, that's a good point. I, I didn't notice. I can't say I noticed it. But do you think, not on the sentence level, but at a higher level, it's maybe a sort of slight lack of trust in the reader to get the point that he's making. And so he's repeating it five different ways. I, I don't. Sorry, go ahead. That could be what it is. Uh, it, I don't know if this was his... You guys mentioned another collection. Exhalation, yeah. yeah. Did that, that come out came out later? This, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so maybe this was his first collection and he's working on it, craft. I don't know. You know, there, there's no doubt with him being a published author, etc., of of some fame now because he's had, you know, Hollywood adaptations. I think we could judge him to a higher standard than somebody who had written their first set of short stories and kind of put it out there in the world for people to explore. I think if we had a writer probably at that stage, we'd been a lot more forgiven about it and a lot more kind of saying, look, this guy's good ideas. I can't wait to see where he goes. Mm -hmm. But because we're reading it kind of much, many years later, and and, 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 established that's true. Yeah. Yeah. And we're talking about it. We're reading it with a very critical eye. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so it, it, um, that that kind of thing is going to stand out when when yeah. you when you when you delve de- de- this deeply into stuff like that. Um. Yeah. Yep. Yes. So, um, but yeah, I I I I think I will read Exhalation at some point. I did enjoy it, but for the most part, I felt like yeah, the point was made within the first ten pages, and then we're just getting. It, it's almost like sort of expanding it into a eh, semi slice of life <laughs> narrative, if you will, like sort of uh, picking this world and then breaking a snippet out of it for some characters. But, you know, that that breaks down too for some of the stories. But yeah, overall, I'm glad to have read it. I'm glad to <laughs> also put it behind me and start reading through. Uh, we're, we're going to be working our way through uh, with the big book of SF stories is that what that's called the big book of so there's a lot of questions but this but this is edited specifically by the vandermeer partnership isn't it Mm -hmm. yes and in jeff and in jeff it's called the ultimate collection 
Nice. And apparently they have stories in this collection that haven't been published before, not oh, that haven't been anthologized before, haven't been translated to English before. So no, it's going to be cool. interesting overall. The second story is by an Indian author that I didn't know wrote sci-fi. Uh -huh. So that, uh, yeah, it's called The Sultana, I think. I think. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think part of this kind of, because I, I would say none of us are experts in science fiction. I think that's fair to say, starting out in this kind of doing this podcast journey but having a collection like the ted chang as a base to kind of say look uh, especially given its length given the ideas and the development the ideas the kind of way he repeats himself having that as a stick to kind of compare like classic sci-fi short stories mm -hmm. which we're probably almost certainly going to do in the next bit will be really interesting because as we probably know a lot of them tend to be kind of philosophical ideas pol political ideas rather than kind of popular culture ideas or otherwise mathematical ideas that that we've had in this in this uh in this collection so i think having, having that as a mirror to hold up to those other ones is actually a really nice uh thing thing to do mm. yeah I, I i agree i i like that uh the comparison of the more modern although these were published uh late 90s to very early 2000s i think for the yeah. first time so yeah they aren't super recent but they are recent enough that they would bear comparison to the 50s and 60s yeah. sci-fi. Do you think they're so popular because they're published in the 90s, right? Um, and the last story, 2001, that um, I think the last story was 2001. But do you think that they were popular because they felt like they were talking about a future to come or they were talking about at the time of their publication, they touched upon relevant issues, but now a lot of these subjects, for instance, the subject of uh, TikTok filters, for instance, like we've had a lot of authors write about already, or mm. I think Paper Menagerie even has a story about that subject, if I remember correctly, or at least about how social media takes, is taking over our lives. Uh, do you think that some of these were interesting for the time that they were published and that's why they're so popular? He just might have hit a, um, you know, you hit that certain time, you, you know, mm -hmm. the right place, right time kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Uh, and also plenty of people seem to like it as well. Like I don't yeah. want to totally dis this, this, the, yeah. disgrace that. The good reads reviews would tell you that we are probably the outliers. And many of us mm -hmm. are the outliers rather than, than actually popular opinion, which yeah. I think. Well, because the idea is a solid like yeah. like you said, the like the actual idea is really good um, that he uh, that he puts out there. I'm not. I'm just not. I'm just not a big fan of some of the execution. Um, mm. But that might not have mattered, you know, when it came out, and that might not matter to a lot of people um, who are really big on the ideas and who really like the ideas and are willing to overlook that um, any other aspect of the stories. Because, like I said before, we're looking we're looking at this with a very critical eye because yeah. we're coming to the table with ideas and things mm -hmm. to talk about, you know. So, yeah, that that makes sense. Cool. So, uh, was there anything else we wanted to talk about the story? No. Sayonara. <laughs> Read the paper menagerie. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we uh, we could pick the SF stories from that at some point and uh, discuss them here. But meanwhile, we're going to be reading The Star by H.G. Wells next week. Um, it's from the collection. We're going to be working our way through the big book of SF. But most of those stories, we think, are available online for free. So we'll post the links whenever uh, we find a free version of the story online in the description so you can read along with us. Uh, thank you so much for listening. We'll see you in about a week. Bye.